Good evening. And welcome to the regular meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach on Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021, at 7 p.m. We're a roll call. Councilmember Dillard? Here. Councilmember Mandel? Present. Uh, Councilmember Trustin? Here. Vice President McGinnis? Here. President Mandel? Present. Let the record indicate the presence of City Manager Don Gay and Corporation Council Richard Dario. So now we'll salute to the plan. Training as well in Narcan, 
So anybody who attends the event, you can train in Narcan, lead with doses of Narcan, so that if God forbid someone in their family, when they see somebody OD, they have a chance of survival. Because whether we, we can't arrest ourselves out of this problem, but hopefully we can save some lives and we can make a difference in Long Beach uh, by starting this. And the plan for the police department is to push this also into the West End. We're going to be talking with the West End School uh, and the school district to see if we can hold the event there, as well as the East End. So we'd like to cover the entire city that way, and then as needed, and as we see things, start to do more and more of these events to create more events. So if there's any uh, questions from the council, or the public, I'm more than happy to entertain those. That's the end of my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our last speaker is Commissioner Lippertino. Uh, yes, the city manager just asked me to discuss unfortunate, an unfortunate incident that happened at um, Reverend J.J. Evans Park. Um, we had approximately $6,000 in our community development funding that we had to use or lose. So we, um, we thought it would be best to buy equipment for the park. Um, unfortunately, you get what you pay for. And we bought equipment that, and we had it installed. Um, and it was really substandard and inferior. And within two to three weeks, it began to, um, the slide broke. I think there was a seesaw that broke. Um, and I didn't, me personally, I didn't feel comfortable with leaving it there. Um, I just think it was equipment that is just not sufficient uh, for public playground that's heavily utilized. So we removed it today. Um, each maintenance department went down there. We're all gonna try to use it at another location. Um, it's probably more suited for you know, very small young children. Um, just, it's just not gonna hold up to, uh, to, to the public park um, to use. So anyway, so we removed it and we'll be ordering something different for the park. But I just wanted to let everybody know that and we thought it was a safety issue and, and we took it down. Any questions? Could that be could that be utilized over at the rec center with the rec center with the daycare center? Right now we're evaluating okay. potential locations for it. It's a it's a possibility. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, do you know the time frame of replacement? Do you know we're coming to the window now? Uh, does that include any uh, replacement of those? Right now, one of the things that you have to put down when you put down a playground equipment is the safety surfacing. It's the rubberized surface that goes underneath the playground equipment. And you can't put that down in cold weather, okay. um, which really should be like 40 degrees of rising. So ideally, you don't want to do a project of this nature until spring. Right. So you're going into the better weather. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just a quick question. Is there any warranty on the equipment? Um, I'll have to check on that. Um, that was purchased through community development. I'll have to check on that. But just so you know, um, we have called on the company and they know that they have told us that they have some standard equipment. Okay. And we want their own to do about it. Okay. Yeah, the company will have a contract with us. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
email me and or to be called e Preston at longbeachmy.com. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, let's move on to the agenda. Okay. Uh, I have chosen to take off the calendar. I want to approve of minutes from prior meetings of October 5th and October 19th, 2021. I will. Second. Good morning, Councilor Mayor. Yes. Councilor Mayor. Yes. Councilor Trustee. Yes. Vice President Jones. Yes. President Mayor. Yes. Uh, I have chosen to take off the calendar. I have three resolutions authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement, engineering services in conjunction with the transit authority and development project. Thank you. 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 Uh, this resolution authorizes the city to enter into an agreement with NB5 for engineering services for the transit oriented development project. On Friday, June 25, 2021, we received three proposals for the project. Um, we had a six member committee evaluating the proposals. Um, just to note, during the evaluation, of course, it's not factored in to the process, and we'll get to that later. We'll have a second that. Uh, the course proposals provided in a separate suit. After all our committee members created proposals, the results are summarized and moved to open cost proposals. In this case, MB5 received the highest rate of 94, and it was the highest rate proposal, and the cost was $108,000. The other two proposals that we received, one was submitted by Elk and Clean Associates in the amount of $143,918, and the other was WSP at $100,988. So they were actually the lowest proposal in this case. They got 93 actually, so it's very close in our scoring. Um, the scope of the project is to enhance walkability, safety, accessibility, and beautification around the Long Island Station. Um, the city park will go like Super Bowl, New River, and JJ Evans Boulevard. Uh, including the project is going to be new and uh, new and new and the crosswalks and curb cuts, pipe racks, traffic calming, signage, streetscape improvements. Our funding is going to be 100% derived from the community development block grant program. Um, there's $370,000 available total. 108 is going towards the consultant. The balance, which is about, uh, about 262000 is going to be uh, for construction. Um, we recommend it's going to be about a six month period for design, so we'll anticipate commencing construction around May 2023, which means. So therefore, I recommend moving forward into Wiley. Just to note also, they were the consultant that designed the Woods Boulevard, South of Park. Um, I mean, I've had very good experience with them. I think kind of you agree, right? They're very good. So I recommend moving forward into that. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, is it of May of what? 2022, I'm sorry. Did I say 2022? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, as part of the uh, comprehensive plan development, they be part of or organize public input sessions as well, or are they strictly doing the working on the document? This is this is a separate from the comprehensive plan. This is a, a more um, this is the comprehensive huh? action plan. This is a separate uh, separate project to just enhance the streets paper basically around the wall. The garage, um, Long Island Railroad, um, Reverend JJ and Boulevard. So it's separate from the comprehensive plan. Sorry, I'm looking at item two. Oh, okay. It's Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Thank you. Sorry, Roy wants to kick me out late last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading the wrong thing. My apologies. <laughs> Have a no problem. Any questions? Okay. Uh, any questions from the public?
why do you this part of the comprehensive plan? I mean, it really seems like it would be something that would be part of the comprehensive plan. It would, it's going to be included, but it's a separate grant. And so we apply for a grant to do just what we state. So it will be mentioned, but we can't, we have to use grant funds for what we apply. And we have to use this now? I just, you know, the, the, the reason I'm asking is because that, from what I understand, they're doing a great job with the comprehensive plan. And, you know, I'm kind of glad to hope to do because I think the people that are working on the plan should have the opportunity to present it to the public first. And I know, you know, I remember when Patty presented the last one, it was phenomenal. It was, you know, it was a great presentation. And people really <coughs> had a, a, a good look at what was proposed. And that's what I'm hoping happens is that we get, the public gets to look at it first before we start spending money. The plan itself will be, will be a, a document and that the, the consultants will go out and talk to the public and then they will present. This is a grant. So this is not something that the public can weigh in on except we will explain it to the public because this is what we apply for. So it will be included in, in the plan. But yes, the plan will go before the public. Yeah. They don't have, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. Uh, I, I just... In my mind, it seems that a comprehensive plan would include all of that, but whatever. Uh, but the other question is, we are taking out a community grant $120,000, are allocating $120,000 for this, but we're only spending one hundred eighty. dollars How come we do the $120,000? Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's a separate grant. It's not, it comes through the CDBG, um, uh, through the CDBG route, but it's a separate funding. No, I, I know, but in the, under the CDBG, it's coming, it's uh, 120,000 you're taking out. <coughs> and this is only 108. Is that on a different page? Yeah, page 10. Thank you. I mean, I'm Thank you. I'm sorry, Roy, what was the question about? I oh, know. that's a separate, that's, that's so this item 10 pertains to the CDBG grant proper, and we're spending $120,000 of CDBG proper. On a separate uh, Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the grant that we're talking about right now is the TOD grant. The grant is an item 10 is another grant. And it's two so different grants. But they're both going for the same thing, transit oriented development. It's two different grants where we apply for different items for both grants. We're not repeating, it's for different items for both grants. <coughs> but they're both transit oriented. Right? Yes, or it's both the same thing. Yeah, you can have just like CDBG, community development block grant. You can have several categories within uh, the CDPG where you apply for money. It just threw me off because they both are community development, uh, transit oriented development yes. programs. Yes. All right, but they're two different ones. Yes. Two different grants, yes. And later on, can you explain the difference when on item 10? I'm sorry? <coughs> when we get to item 10, can yes. you explain the difference? Right, I didn't break the time. The, uh, it's two different grants, I know it can sound confusing. Initially, we applied for a special grant, which we received from the county, of 150000 And then working with the city and Moni, we have used some CDBG funds to augment that money, because our budget, the total budget that Joe mentioned, is 370000 So 108000 is for the engineers to design and oversee the project, and the rest of the money will be used for the actual Oh, okay, so it's one project. Yes, well, okay, thanks. Okay. okay, that's what I didn't understand. And, and the other question you asked um, was about getting it done now. Some of these funds have to be used up in the next uh, 14 months when we lose the fund. So that's what I was looking at. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <coughs> okay, any other questions for the public? All right, seeing none, let's move on to item four. 
I perform the resolution of the the city manager to purchase vehicles for the city's sanitation department from New York State Office of General Services from the lowest responsible member. This would be Tina and Kevin. Good evening. Um, so this item pertains to uh, the lease purchase that uh, the city is planning to um, undertake in the next couple of months. Um, Devin will talk a little bit more about why and the need. Um, they convinced us during the budgeting process that it's absolutely imperative to uh, bring new vehicles into the sanitation fleet. Um, and uh, there is $180,000 budgeted there um, for, for um, the lease of uh, this equipment. And uh, we had worked with the vendors that are um, on the state contracts and are reachable. Um, and, and the quotes in this uh, resolution, they come from, um, from those vendors that, that um, have state contracts. Uh, and um, in terms of the financing, um, once this is approved, I will work with um, the new banks that the city is working with um, to get the best available financing for the city. Um, Nina, is, you mentioned 180,000 was budgeted. And we're using, it looks like we're anticipating 123,000 roughly. Um, I'm not sure, it depends on the, what the finances are looking like. But this was something anticipated that was needed in this budget. No. I'm sorry, Mike, were you, what was your question? It's basically, um, we anticipated the need to replace these vehicles. Yes. In this 2021-2022 budget. Yes. I just wanted to make it known that this is something that's not coming up unexpected. I, I think um, there's a broader issue here. Um, this item four is also actually related to item five, okay? So the first, at item four, you're requesting three vehicles for 120,000. Yeah. But you're not, and the budget is 180,000. Well, yeah, I looked it up before I came. Yeah, uh, that's accurate, but that's not, we're not purchasing them on drive, we're basically. Exactly, so could you explain to everyone how you are going to recognize the cost? You're not going to recognize a 120 this year against 180. You're going to recognize what amount? So again, once, um, once we enter into agreement with the financing institution, uh, we have, uh, a, like, like for the mortgage, you have your mortgage amortization. Uh, there, there would be, let's say, five or seven years, whatever the um, lease agreement would stay. Um, payment schedule and um, based on the, the payment schedule we would be the uh, same amount on a monthly basis and the uh, amount will be allocated between the principal and the interest it's basically financing so um, what how we would recognize it we would recognize it by um, moving money from the sanitation into the debt service fund. And in a debt service fund, we would recognize the payments on the principal and on the interest of, uh, of, of, of the equipment, of the lease. So, so it's a bit of a complicated from accounting standpoint transaction. Right, so 120 isn't going to disappear from this fund no. for these three cars because we're going to be adding four more vehicles in the next item. Yeah. And then, and then you also have the asset of your capital when you receive the, uh, the vehicles? Yes, 
economic, government-wide financial statements where we've recognized the value of the asset and um, as a liability, the principal table on the... And I, I do understand it is complicated because <laughs> you're, uh, it's at least finance agreement that... Uh, if we had a live board, it could have, like, you know, uh, during the lectures. I just wanted to bring it up that it was not unanticipated, unexpected, and the only thing that's not anticipated is that uh, we don't know when we receive the vehicles and we don't know the financing terms at this point, correct? Right? Absolutely right. The only uh, unanticipated part of it is that we don't know the supply chain issues. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right, any more questions for the council? Any questions for the public? All right, seeing none, let's move on to item five. Item five, the resolution authorizes the city manager to receive the city under the Honolulu County contract. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so basically it's the same story with a different vehicles. <laughs> why don't you talk about the vehicles that we're getting and why you need them? Right. I've been waiting to speak, so. Uh, we have four vehicles we'll be re replacing. They are 17 to 18 years old. They have reached their life expect expectancy, so I mean, it speaks for itself. The vehicles will be, be replaced on two 25-yard packages, real owners, and two 32-yard packages, and will purchase two 25-yard packages and replace two 32-yard packages. So we're just filling in, but we're getting rid of just making everything new. Two years ago, we replaced the six vehicles. So this is just carrying on from two years ago. So we can have a new fleet. We don't have to go back to these issues. And for the next five, six years, we'll be good. So, the pickup trucks, same condition. Prior to Sandy, it's just time to start over, start fresh. Have new vehicles. Uh, just so everybody knows, could you tell us, state your name so we know? Devin Parker, Superintendent of Home Sanitation. Thank you, Devin. That's why I figured let everybody know who's speaking and uh, yeah. And I'm sure uh, they appreciate it. Um, this is a question for you, but I don't know if it's really uh, in your area. What happens with the vehicles that are putting out of service? Like, if they're all the beat up there. I mean, most of the time they go out for auction. It's sold for, I'm not sure what the cost of the life for. They're still in running condition, but it's old. So, right. someone will purchase them. I was on way down south, so. For salvage, and they yeah. do it that yeah. way. Exactly. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. 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 a lot of issues with repair, so going new with the lease, everything's covered. Warranty for 100,000 miles, saves money on parts, things like that. Serious issues, it goes back to the manufacturer, and they fix it. So that's a good thing. Bonus. With the last six trucks we got in 2019, they've been holding up really well. Issues have been great. If they're serious issues, we send it back, they fix it for free, comes back to us. So it's been really good. So, you're an right. educated me, I'm sure you're educating <laughs> everybody else about the whole process of you know what, what happens on a day to day basis. Yeah. You know. Thank you. So right. Thank you. All right, well, any other questions from the council? John. Oh, you see? You see? That was on I thought he said for I knew he wouldn't do it. Huh? What'd you say, Roy? I knew he wouldn't do that. He I said, I said, Roy, that was me. You said I already said it. I was thinking of the other right. Well, you put this thing as far away from me as you can. Um, my really good point about the, uh, 
you know, to do some planning, but do we keep going? Well, this part, you, but I'm trying to anticipate some questions you gave me. You'll never do it. Um, do we have a schedule for these replacements? Because I've noticed this with the police vehicles and stuff like that. And I know, know they're old, but do we actually have a schedule that people could see? We're starting to create a schedule uh -huh. uh, of all of the old vehicles. And actually, I would say 90, over 90% of the city's fleet needs to be replaced. And so we are gathering yeah, all, the information, <laughs> all of the information right now and trying to figure out how often we can start replacing vehicles. Okay. And um, just out of curiosity, how many miles does a garbage truck do a year? Because I know they, it's they go. Hours, not miles. It's what? Engine hours. hours, not miles. But isn't it one feet by miles? But it do all encompasses the same part. But do we have one feet on engine hours or just on miles? So it's strictly miles, no matter how much. Yeah. But we, have, we don't know. Right. That's something that we can find out, but just so you know, we don't make any purchases unless we have a warranty. Oh, I know. I, I was listening about the playground equipment, and thank goodness we have a warranty on that. Um, and the other thing is, and, and Karen, you brought this up, but the, this money, the 180, is going to be used to pay the leases. Yes. But we don't know if it's a five year or seven year, that's all. You got to see what we can get, right? Yes. So, if, and, you know, I, I figure if it's a seven year, it'll be about 140000 and then that money just stays there. Yes. Or do we? It's, it's 240000 at four years, 192000 at five years, and 160000 at six years for all our vehicles in four and five. Well, if Tina said possibly seven. Well, possibly seven. So I basically just extrapolated it out to make sure that the one e this year would cover the full amount of. Can we use that the balance of the one eighty if we go seven to pay down principal? Um, basically, that would be require us uh, a resolution so that we could transfer the money on the council. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I think this is the last one, and Devin or anybody correct me if I'm wrong. In the past. The transportation of sanitation uh, went to, I believe, West Area. I think now it's going to Inland. Therefore, the mileage, you're getting more miles, or you're, it's requiring less miles now to go back and forth to Inland than it was previously in previous years. That's correct, right? Okay. I was so, just curious about the long sheet, how long that would cover us. But you asked about mileage and you asked about hours and I just wanted to point out that there were decisions made in the past that um, was discussed how beneficial it could be to lengthen the lifespan of the, of the vehicle. Just, I thought, so I, I was right. Thank you. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions from the public? All right, on to item six. Item six is resolution authorizing settlement of social audit proceedings. Hi, good evening. This is a proposed tax surgery settlement for the Whip Reds on New York at uh, 600 <coughs> Memorial Boulevard. It settles eight years from 2014 through 2021, and there's a three-year moratorium. If it's to be approved, it's about $36,400 in cash settlement with an assessment reduction of 38% from $56,500 to $35,000. Uh, myself and Jenna Pettis in my office did a walk through the prop property. It's pretty much been the same since the 30s. Nothing's been approved. It's, it's in pretty bad shape. Uh, it's, Industrial property, so the value property is using uh, comparable rentals uh, in the region and coming up with a value of uh, negotiations between you know, the park value of $1,070,000 uh, this current year. Um, the settlement, uh, there will be no interest payments involved in it. 
the CAG City of Boston appraisal consultant and a legal consultant who worked at the trial. Uh, and the proposed account is the appraisal for much less than the value that we sell. Um, pretty much covers it. Any questions? All right, any questions from the council members? Hearing none, any from the public? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to item seven. Item seven. Oh. Item seven is a resolution to authorize the transfer of funds for the 21 22 fiscal year. Good evening again. So, um, the police department was working on trying to get great money for the shot spotter program, and I also uh, wanted to work on the coverage area and improvements. So, we were able to negotiate a low price for this. We, it wasn't included in our original budget because we were supposed to get granted for it, but the granting fell through. So, what we did in the budget was we took one. We was trying to go up one additional special for the year. We decided to uh, forego that for this year, use uh, a portion of the salary to pay for this uh, shot spot contract, and the remaining to uh, the remaining money will be used for other budgetary needs. We're uh, looking to uh, increase our detective vision by two uh, members as well, and we will still, with all of that being done, have about. Uh, Two to three thousand dollars left over, so close in that range, uh, to cover other expenses that might come from budget money. Any questions? Okay, any questions from the council members? Hearing none, any from the public? Okay, thank you. Let's move on to item eight. I have eight resolution of the budget to general fund budget. Okay, any questions? Um, I'm just going to go briefly over 
over the whole concept, we anticipated 100% of the American rescue plan money to be received by June 30th, 2021. This money would go to the fund balance of fiscal 2021 and should have been used in operation in this fiscal year. What happened when we received 50% of that uh, revenue, uh, by 6 30 2021, the remaining 50% will be received either in May or June of um, 2022. So uh, we need to memorialize that through the resolution that um, the use of the fund balance is going to be reduced and uh, the $1.7 million will actually come as a federal revenue. This will allow us to have a lower preservation uh, when we prepare financial statements and have that ascending with the uh, um, rating agencies. And they will correctly, um, obviously, um, uh, demonstrate what, what really happened. Um, I don't have a specific question on this particular um, transaction, but it does lead me to the point that um, I have not seen a cash flow forecast, um, and um, that is something that is critical for the council to have. Um, and uh, historically, things happen in the beginning of the calendar year, and I have no visibility into that right now. So I'm on the record asking for a cash flow forecast. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Right, hearing none, any from the public? Can we put a microphone here? Sit on the other side. You can have a sit on that side. Shortly, you'll be sitting there. Maybe you should have. Yeah. I'm just not sure. Was this the money that we're going to, that's going to help pay for O'Leary or O'Malley or whatever, the consultants and 3M? No, the money for, um, for the restructuring is from FRB. FRB? Yes. I get my initials. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We've always gotten so far as 300 of that, 300,000. Oh, FRB? Yeah. Hi. So we received money from the FRB for prior projects um, as it pertains to restructuring. We have not received anything yet. Oh, okay. And they're not pregnant, right? No, not at this time. Okay. Any other questions from the public? All right, seeing none, item 10. Item 10 is resolution authorizing an annual allocation of community development funds for the 47th program year. And I believe we have an uh, amendment to this item. Yep, I'm going to propose an amendment to it. Um, the uh, administration salaries line should be changed from 45000 to 39600 and the adult preventative services line should be changed from 20,000 to 10,000. I will. Go ahead, the word. Um, the second change was from 20,000 to 10,000? Yes. And it's on the, the last line, adult preventative services. Is that right? That Correct. Is right. Okay. Uh, second. Uh, it's yes or no. Yes or no. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Vice President Gibbs. Yes. President Yes. Motion yes. carries. Oh, go ahead. Mom. No, go ahead. We oh. just amended it. Oh, okay. So the numbers work. Oh, okay. I thought I was done. Um, okay. Um, would you like me to explain? Do we need to go over, or we should have published? Um, should have a well, you could just explain what we're doing. Great. I mean, I'm, I uh, am very excited. This is the first CDBG uh, grant that we have applied that is completely aligned 
um, with our operational budget, with our staffing model, uh, every department is kind of aligned to the expectations of it. And what you see here is now we have created youth and families departments um, over, over in Magnolia's second floor to represent exactly what the budget says, youth services, um, senior services, and adult services. Previously, we had contracts that could be about two or three pages, and the problem with that is that it was detailed, but it wasn't aligned to the process. Things to meet with Nina, we were able to align fiscal, um, staffing models, um, identifying some like the people, places, and things. So the place that we have now is at Magnolia Second Floor. That's where the services will be provided in addition to in the community. We actually have a location. Um, we were well, we welcomed the Nassau County Office of Community Development with the director, Kevin McCree, we were honored to have him in the building as well as Teresa Dukes and Donald Carsey. It was very important to have them here because they haven't been in a while, but they now understood our new framework um, and they wanted to see and they wanted to talk because if we had to talk about the balance scorecards and how the UCBD funds, uh, we have had expired contracts with expired funds that we were not able to uh, we were uh, outsourcing a lot of these services. Um, when you outsource, you have organizations that are not aligned with our process as far as resolution, procedures, and budgeting. Um, that since the time of uh, services wasn't in that, it wasn't aligned, and it wasn't transparent. Uh, as far as what is CDBG, who is eligible, and how funds should be dispersed. And when it's not clear, uh, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions that it was free money and grant money, and it is not. Uh, what the city is doing is um, finding the money or putting the money up front for the expenses with the hope of all the documents reporting and, and um, outcomes done effectively so that the actually kind of will then review it and give us the money back. If you don't know, like I know, Ina wants the money to be there or in focus as it should be, um, and that was a difficult part of us explaining that. So you have your funders want to know exactly what you're doing. So we now have changed that where we only have three sessions. Uh, when it comes to public service, we can fund out, which will be based on, like we said, the needs of the community. We can provide some recipient grants, we can give funding or contracts, but being that it's, it's the city money that's going out, which is being reversed, we have to control how it's going out and, and this reflects that. In addition to the services, we are putting high concentration on the parks, uh, parks and playgrounds. Um, and Joe Graham, Commissioner, has expressed, and we deal with in um, County Canada also talk about what our parks look like and with the new norm of being outside and what the was priority. In addition to still working <coughs> economic development and our TOD, which is a high priority for Nassau County community development, as a, which is our transit oriented. <coughs> so everybody is aligned with our priorities and reflects with this, the first one. Um, well, could you just briefly talk about parks and playgrounds in the case? Why? Uh, so, in particular, that's a great question because it's not a place in there. We looked into uh, Magnolia Park, uh, we looked into Sherman Brown Park, and to continue the Leeward Conference Park in particular. Um, and as you can see, it says parks and playgrounds. So, previously, we have specific addresses. Mm -hmm. So, we don't have to do that because the overall criteria of CDBG it is uh, area benefit low moderate income benefit and it's determined by the city now. So we are trusting that we have the data um, and I work with Nassau County that we can to determine if that area needs that benefit. So we don't want to have to um, so yes, okay. Right, and I just for the general public's knowledge in mind that we've got uh, no desert when you apply for a plan, you, you basically outline in advance the needs in certain areas like location and description and then this year's group said, uh, you're applying for the grant, you may do the work up front, and in conformity with the grant application, the county will inspect or whatever state of the agency that you, you did it according to what you asked for, and then give you the money. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from the council? The one thing I want to say is that. Um, when I first came, we had several hundreds of thousands of dollars that had not been spent by, uh, with CDBG. Um, Monique has done an excellent job of getting that money spent, asking for 
for work for realignment. And what we did was we showed that we were transparent in our reporting. So to have them come out and to see that we are improving the way we do things and how we how we spend the dollars, this will allow us to apply and possibly receive more money than we have in the past. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions for the council? <laughs> Hearing none, any from the public? Yes. The uh, Sherman Law Project. Can you go to the mic? Do you mind about your statement, please? Yes. Terrence Harris, the Sherman Brown Park, is that the one on Pine Street? Yes. I would like to see that enclosed with some type of fencing where you don't see the recycling yard and the other stuff behind there. If you can get proper fencing, where it looks very nice over there, other than just to see the bay area, where it doesn't look too nice. Thank you.
developing the community as what the funds are set for. The city is now providing the staff and salary. Um, and if there's a requirement to use the salary, so if you're using someone in like a position, they have to provide services to 51% of that population. Um, and I have identified staff because we have a new staff model. We have a youth specialist, we have a senior specialist, and an adult specialist here at the city. Um, and that has been approved by Access County Community Development. Security does not, um, it, it will be under public, public service. Um, and we can identify a public service or good that's being serviced by the use of security. Okay, so they just changed the security. But they still have security at Dice Green and the Red. And so the city is providing the staff of that and the urgent need for security in the Martin Luther King Center, again, which provides the majority of the uh, approval, gets a majority of the community development funding, I believe. And as we said, we said we'll do a need assessment. I'm just one person. Many people believe that the MLK can utilize that extra service that Frank Hiddleston worked so hard to get with myself and others to have someone at that front desk to help out and provide that extra security. Do community development, would they have been able to purchase the cameras at the MLK Center? It's fixed now, because the MLK used that funding, and there's a lot of other things that need to be fixed there. So I don't know if, uh, you So know, James, anything yeah. that's outstanding that needs to be fixed with MLK? Yes. Um, as we begin to negotiate the lease, we will identify what the city will and will not pay for, and with all the leasing payments. So those uh, conversations will be picked back up within the next 30 to 60 days, and then we can put that in, in there. Also, you keep mentioning the ICE arena. CDBG does not pay for security at the ICE arena. And so what you're asking us is for CDBG to pay for security at the MLK, but she explained that it cannot, and it does not pay for the ICE arena. So all of your concerns, you can have your the uh, executive director and the new chairman of MLK when we decide to sit down and come together to discuss the lease that we can then put all the, that information in there. Well, they can do whatever they want, but I'm a concerned citizen first. You would be walking out on that board. So uh, again, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I have? Can I have? No, this I'm time? Okay. saying to you, James, is I understand what you're saying. Okay. It will be discussed when we discuss. Okay, so I want I wanted to go on record that they need security, and the ice arena do have security. I've been working with the city 23 years. I've been here for 44 years. The orange shirts that go in and out and provide maybe for some tournaments and things. What's fair for one is fair for the other. When that area pulls the majority of seats. And also, so they do go over there. They maybe take a ride to Mark. You see, aren't sure maybe pop in, pop out. That security for that whole establishment over there, the whole recreation complex. And so, also, you know, I have, I have a lot of questions, but I can't get them all because I don't know how much time I have left. But again, I don't know if some of that money's been designated to go to the MLK to help some of the programs there because again, the North Park pulls in the majority of CDBG funding in the city of Long. So did any of that 47 year money which was transferred, we had hundreds of thousands of dollars that wasn't spent where the AC wasn't working and kids were hot and it was 90 degrees in the building, was any of that money designated to go there when we discovered all of this extra money and we were shifting and transferring funding when the children sat for three months hot? Some of the city council we even came there with sweat, and I thank God that they came and they supported the program, but they even saw how hot it was. So did any money go to say we're going to fix this? And why, if it's your building, will we discuss what should be fixed? If it's your building, fix the building. The landlord don't say, I'm going to fix this, and then you fix that door, and I'm... That shouldn't even be a part of the lease. These are children that are in a low-income, poor area, and it should be that we're going to put money to take care of the low-income and the poor members. And if we say seniors are over at the recreation, what happened to the seniors over at the MLK? It's a lot of time is Okay, thank you. So what happened if we're expediting programs at the recreation, which I love and I care about, and the bottom to maple from the Bay Ocean, what happened to the program that expedited and working with them over there in the North Park area. No, you know that, Monique, we just explained what 
my women's are CDBG dollars. So you change the way you use them, but I'm just saying that we change the way we use them according to the guidelines that we should have always been using them. So James, if you would like to come in and talk to us, uh, if you would like to come in and talk to us, then we would greatly appreciate you coming in. We have had the discussion about the air conditioner several times. Um, so I suggest that you make an appointment with Mr. Fabrizio, myself, Monique, and we can discuss. And also, please have your chairman of your board come in of the board and the executive director. Well, I'm not on the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Also, to keep note that um, they get any upgrades and improvements to buildings. It's what CDB call public facilities and improvements. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that for a long time, which is one of some of the contracts that have been expired because of us being unable to identify the need and how it directly impacts the community at large. This 47 year budget, a couple of things that you mentioned, is that the application was done in January or February. There were no programs. So the goal of this was to create uh, a budget to provide programs because no one but the city at the time, through COVID and other things, couldn't provide a program, including yourself, because of the reopening and the safety guidelines. Right? So at that time, this grant was developed not to, not to do buildings, but no one was in buildings. So not to, to upgrade or do anything in the city. And the city and the, and the National County understood that. So they wanted me to think it ahead, which that's why the money is available right now as of September 1st, of what would be needed for the community at large post COVID with the new norm. And it was to provide services specifically towards that outside the parks and playgrounds and with services that they will need. And you see that we have never provided adult preventive services. And we will talk more about what those adult preventive services. We also talked about seniors. Seniors are also at the Magnolia second floor. Um, there have been some programs that they have been in need based on uh, completing a needs assessment. And there have been seniors that have been at the NLK that also come to the recreation. So there's a lot of things you said about that that I wanted to say, but we, you know, you and I can go on that and I'm trying to touch some of the things that you said. Um, and security on the CDBG is not a service. So let's just be clear about that. All right, just to answer back, and I know my time is up. You did it over there. You said we wasn't thinking about funding and we didn't have it, but City Hall had two big air conditioner trucks out here. So if we can do air conditioning out here at City Hall, these are babies, these are children. You could have did it there. And if you do senior programs over there, it's a lot to unpack, but a lot of it got unpacked on this side and not on this side. Let's unpack a lot over there. And yes, me and Monique can talk a whole lot about CDBG funding, because when she first started doing things alone, we tried to work with her and help give us some of the information. So thank you. Again, let's unpack some over that way. All right, yeah. thank you. All right, any other questions from the public?
It was originally awarded. There have been multiple resolutions authorizing the city manager to exceed the original resolution amount. Uh, this is the last and final for, uh, resolution for $41,534.50. This will officially close out the work against contract and also have the three resolutions. I researched them um, if you want me to go through them. Um, I'm just looking forward to what they, they were. Um, but this was common practice to get authorization from the council to um, exceed the original bid amount on the requirements contract based on available funding. Okay. Any questions from the council? Just make you pay for more rooms. That's good. Yes. Hearing none, any from the public? Okay. Thank you, Joe. On item 12. And 12 is a resolution authorizing the city manager for the the grant from the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation for the construction of a new elevated water storage tank in the city. Um, yes, this is a resolution authorizing the city to apply for and potentially accept the grant under the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation, a uh, water infrastructure improvement act, commonly uh, called REA, for the 1.25 million gallon elevated water storage tank. Um, grants under this program are due November 22nd, 2021. Um, and this is uh, this resolution to prerequisite uh, filing the application. Um, H2M is the contract that a uh, consultant will retain to prepare the grant on behalf of the city. The grant max is 60% of the project amount, not to exceed 3 million. Um, in this case, the estimated cost of the project is 9,240,540. Uh, we would therefore potentially receive three million through the program, leaving the city responsible for six million twenty-four thousand five hundred. Um, this will be available once funds are borrowed, personal with the bond authorization thirty thirty-five nineteen. On September third, two thousand nineteen, the amount of nine million. Um, so, you know, I, I try to make it a practice that in my tenure, when people say I will apply for a grant, I want to apply for a grant for things that were already broken. So, again, yeah, this was a, a project. In this case. Um, it's a water tower that was uh, being designed by the work of water ocean consultants. Um, it's probably been designed and completed in about a year. We previously authorized, didn't borrow money for it. So it's, 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 a, good, it's a great candidate to try to obtain money uh, for it in regards to the project. Um, and me and I have gone over this. Um, and to me, it's a no brainer. To do this, it's actually going to be another, we're going to have to have one more resolution before the deadline, which is at the next council meeting. Regarding the CEQA process, the Climate to Quality Review Act, we basically have to, um, this one mentioned CEQA, but in the next one we're going to have to actually say that we did the paperwork for CEQA. And there's going to be one more resolution before we apply it in the next one. Actually, there will be two more, one for each one, which I'm going to go over next. Any questions? Okay, questions from the council. Hearing none, any from the public? All right. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for answering all the questions. I was peppering you with today. Yeah, no, no problem. No, I know it's, it's a little confusing, so I, I yeah. don't really get it, you know. Um, but after you helped me, you would ask me questions. I appreciate it. Okay. And uh, let's move on to item 13. Item 13 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for two grants from the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation for the construction of the replacement of well 16A. Again, this is a resolution authorizing the city to apply for a potential accept the grant from the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation Water Infrastructure Improvement Act for four million for the replacement of well number 16, 16A. Grants on the program again they're through November 22nd, 2021. Um, again, this is a prerequisite to file the application. Um, H2M is also preparing this. Just so you know it as well. Um, H2M is preparing both these applications, and the fee for them is three thousand dollars, which I thought was extremely reasonable, um, and that's why we had them uh, prepare the grant. Um, the way they explained it to me, the reason they were able to do it so extensively, which is they're doing probably about six of these in various municipalities throughout the island, so they were able to do it at a very reasonable price. So that's the reason we gave it to them. Um, so again, the grant is 60% of the project amount not to exceed $3 million. In this case, the estimated cost of the well is $4 million. We therefore potentially receive 60% of $4 million, or $2.4 million, and the city responsible for $1.6 million. Um, and this will be available as well. Um, the fund that was uh, authorized in our bar, pursuant to resolution 3rd, 2021, on July 6, 2021, the amount of 
Thank you. Questions? Um, I guess it's just worth noting if we get these, that's five and a half million dollars almost in uh, grant money. Yeah, that, that's it's really no grant. Which, yeah, which is one great. That, yeah. That's been authorized to fund Rhonda's those resolutions. So anything we can get to uh, help mitigate those costs is, is really a win. Yeah. And right. just so you know, there's 400 million dollars available through this program. Through the, through the, through the program. Yes. All right. Any questions from the council? Okay. There are none. Any from the public? All right. Thank you, Joe. Let's move on to item 14. In Fortune's resolution authorizing the publication to hearing of local law amending subpart C related actually to the charter of the city of Long Beach regarding a local law opting out of licensing and establishing on site cannabis consumption establishment permits within the city of Long Beach pursuant to cannabis law section 131. This item is a publication law and the hearing will be held on Wednesday, November 17th at 6 30 p.m. Item 15 is a resolution. Authorizing publication to hearing of a local law amending subpart C related act related to the charter of the mortgage regarding a local law opting out of licensing and establishing of cannabis dispensaries in the city of Long Beach pursuant to the cannabis law section 131. This item is a publication only in hearing will be held on December 17th at 6 30 p.m. So the voting. Uh, item 3 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement engineering services in conjunction with the transit oriented development project. Which just move the adoption of this item. Oh. Second? I won't. Voting, Councilman Delorio. Yes. That's where we're going to Yes. That's where we're trusted. Yes. Vice President McKinnis. Yes. President Pena. Yes. Item four is resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase vehicles for the city sanitation department of the New York State Office of General Services for the world's responsible bidder. Just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Mandel. Yes. Councilman Trust. Yes. Vice President McKinnis. Yes. President Pender. Yes. Item five is a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase vehicles for the city under an Onondaga County contract. Which just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Mandel. Yes. Councilman Trusty. Yes. Vice President McKinnis. Yes. President Bender. Yes, and thank you to Devin and the staff for helping us modernize a very old fleet that is in desperate need of modernization. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6 is resolution authorizing settlement of sociology proceedings. Introduce me to the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Mandel. Yes. Councilman Trusty. Yes. Vice President McKinnis. Yes. President Bender. Yes. Item seven is a resolution authorizing transfer funds for the 2021-22 fiscal year. Which just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second. I will. Voting, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Mandel. Yes. Councilman Trusty. Yes. Vice President McKinnis. Yes. President Bender. Yes. Item A is resolution authorizing budget amendment to the general fund budget, which gives me the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Voting, oh, Councilman Delury. Um, I'd just like to thank the, the John Carbone family again, and I'd be at the vote, yes. Uh, Councilman Mandel. Yes. Uh, Councilman Trust. Yes. Vice President McGinnis. Yes. President Bender. Yes. Item nine is resolution authorizing budget amendment to the general fund budget. Just move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. Okay, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Amanda. Yes. Councilman Trust. Yes. Vice President McGinnis. Yes. President Bender. Yes. And the tenants resolution authorizing annual allocation of community development funds for the 47th program year. Which just move the adoption of this item as amended. I will. Second? I will. Voting, Councilman Delury. Yes. Councilman Mandel. Yes. Councilman Petrosky. Yes. Vice President McGinnis. Excellent work, Money. Yes. President Mandel. Yes. Item um, 11 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to amend the current agreement for asphalt overlay work at various locations throughout the city on an as needed basis. Introduce move the adoption of this item. I will. Second? I will. 
we're going to work in for science tomorrow because we just passed this in the publication, so we can go look at that data and see what it is she wrote some action for that. Okay. We'll probably be doing that same process with other people who want to present um, like organizations or you know, unions or whatever we can get. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, th this, this meeting, yeah, this is the public hearing that takes place as part of the council meeting. There'll be a separate like working session type meeting where we're also going to have discussions on this and get input because this is something that you're not going to get done in one public hearing. I know, but we, we're on a very tight schedule. We are. Okay. Um, that's one. And uh, on the asphalt overlay, could we at some point get listing of what's going to be done and what was done? You know, people are always complaining and it would be great if they could see, hey, this is what we've done already or this is, is going to be done just to know already. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, Crystal Lake.
North Park is considered um, census tract 4165. I believe it's block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That was quick. <laughs> However, um, census data was not updated for a very long time. So community development funds were utilized throughout the city of Long Beach. And to make this very short, thank you for the additional few moments. I greatly appreciate that. The de deferred, uh, preferred developers at that time was Cameron Engineering. And their um, redevelopment plan was absolutely fabulous. It was. However, it did need some tweaking. So moving forward, I would hope that all present, future councils would take something of this nature into consideration. And, you know, hopefully, I won't just be displaced again. Okay, so, so, your time's up, but I think one thing that's worth noting, that's why it's important when the public input sessions are taking place, this plan, people like you who have that history of what worked, what didn't work, in your case, a lot didn't work, so that's taken into account as this plan is being developed. Remember, they're starting from scratch. So they're not going back and reinventing, they're basically reinventing the wheel, in a sense. So that's why people with your perspectives that have seen what has gone on over the years would, will be important to make sure that those concerns that you have are incorporated into this plan. Um, if I may reply, and you're absolutely correct, and you know I've done my due diligence. Absolutely. Okay, it's all of the research that I have acquired, I have shared over the years, and um, unfortunately, it did not benefit, you know, the North Park community. Um, I never kept any information to myself. I shared and shared and shared the redundancy competitiveness was ridiculous. And I participated in New York Community Rising. I was a committee member. I contacted, I was in contact with the DC, the federal government, I was on the EAB board. So all of that time, okay, I worked extremely hard, just as many other individuals. So that's why I was really like this on the record. Thank you for your time. That's fine. And like I said, just we need input from people like you when, as this plan is being developed, because you have that history that a lot of people don't. And the supporting documentation. And, and the support. <laughs> this lady does. Yeah. Thank you for sending the information that you do send. Um, but I can say, as someone that is not as familiar with um, everything you've been through, um, I am. I'm having difficulty in understanding what you want me to focus on in the documents that you send me. Um, so maybe some bullet points as to what I should be paying attention to in certain segments or sections or paragraphs or basically a summary of what you want me to take away from the documents would be extremely instructive. So basically, um, you know, I appreciate you educating me on the topic. Okay, that has never been a problem. Um, over the years, there were that, that specific information, and it should be in house somewhere. Um, but I would move forward. I would be happy to pinpoint everything. Yeah, so you know, I get the documents, and I get, here's the documents, but I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with the documents. Just reading them, or is it? Well, uh, to have a better understanding, if you can view them, if you do take a look at them, you can see the changes within the history of the city of Long that, That's one thing. Um, I would need a primer, a primer of basically, here's the situation, here's the history, and in your, on your weekend, I recommend in this order of priority the documents that you should be reading to get up to speed on this issue. That would be helpful to me. I would because like, I don't, one of the things I wanted to say is that I will be in contact with you days um, so that you and I can meet and sit down and talk about some of the things that you um, have sent over and then maybe we can come up with something that we can both give the council so they can read but I also need your input on a couple of other things. 
And so I will be in touch with you. All right, thank you. I'd like, I'd like to ask Ms. Lady one question. <coughs> Could you briefly explain what you like in the cabinet interviewing proposal that you had mentioned? Well, the amenities were fabulous. Um, Such we, as? Uh, they had the, um, the amphitheater. Uh, they had the... This was in the, okay. Yeah. I got it. This is the, the draft comprehensive plan or Bayfront development that was... Well, there was a presentation by Cameron Engineering. I do have those documents. I know the amphitheater, but I mean... Right. But as far as... The, the, the problem was that it was targeted. The targeted population would have not have included low to middle income. Okay, and that and what I find also problematic, and it's just my opinion, and no one has to agree with me. When you target a population such as individuals will say students, seniors, but if the project is done properly, it should meet the needs of students, seniors, singles, um, excuse me, students, individuals, seniors, of course the board and families, a studio could apply to a senior as well as a, um, a student, <coughs> a student or senior. So a lot of those things would have worked well, but depending upon the affordability criteria, that's also a problem. The other, the other concern I, I you know, at least I had, not about this particular issue, but I remember I think in January, um, my first month in, in the office here, there was a plan that evidently was talked about that you had mentioned you never even heard about. Okay. It was supposed to be community outreach and getting things out there for the, um, to get community feedback. Oh, well, part of the problem is, is that a lot of individuals might not have completed um, sometimes they do post the bulletins, and I know for myself, sometimes the bulletins are knee high. Mm -hmm. So if you're driving by, you know, you really don't get a glimpse of it. Um, I would suggest that a database be created, which is available already, utilizing the phones. Because mostly everyone has a phone. So if there is a meeting or something that's extremely important, so it's what what I basically try to ask is how can we as the city council, city government, city manager communicate to get the message for for example, there's a meeting coming up, or if you would like to have a meeting to get information for the for the community on a topic. That's where I'm trying to get out is communication. Okay, so a lot of times the information is posted on Facebook. Sometimes people do not utilize Facebook. So honestly, it's old school. Old school, Dr. Walker. Dr. Walker. Dr. Walker. Okay. Okay. For the comprehensive plan, part of the plan is to look at different ways to get the word out um, it, that we would have the meetings. And it's not using the same techniques as we are using now. So we can talk to Ms. Lake, but we will be talking to others. So we're not talking about just posting it on Facebook or posting on the website because not everybody has a computer, not everybody has Facebook. Um, and we are also going to do it by areas within the community, within Long Beach, so that no one area will be concentrated on. So we are looking at all of that on how to get the word out and how to get the community involved. Thank you. Uh Ms. Lake and Donna and Donna because I know she knows how to get the message out of the, this comprehensive plan, the draft update, to get all members of the entire city of Long Beach to weigh in on their needs. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, James Hodge.
James Hodge, uh, 95 East Local Street, Long Beach, New York. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, Crystal is a true historian and knows a lot of information and have a lot of documents. Some said point to certain things that you may want to see, Vice President. The certain things is that she was kicked out for gentrification. That's the main thing. Certain things is when Mill Bob was built, all of those families was gentrified out, kicked out. That's another point. The main point is we're looking to do something in that community, but it's good to be at the table rather than on the meeting. It's good to be a part of the plan and not the plan be made without you because you won't be a part of it or in the plan. We've seen gentrification over and over and over and we don't want it anymore. And that's the simple thing about the Bayfront and whatever takes place there. Why would we start over from scratch? When John Bindo, you was a part of many of the chart meetings and we met all over town, walking street to street, we met at the MLK, we met. Yes, we could come up with ideas and edit some things, but the in-depth study that we did, why would we, when we spent thousands and thousands of dollars, throw that out the window? When we had lots of the minority community, yes, people from the bottom to the Maple and the Bay, Bay to the ocean, but it's going to adversely affect, depending upon how it's done, the people that's right there first. So those should get priority. Yes, the city needs more revenue. You know, they got three unions, and we understand that percentages and things go up, so you got to find new revenue. If you raise taxes, you might get kicked out of office. But don't keep those people out of office, because I live in North Park, and I love my North Park. I may not have sand in my shoes, but I got some, I got some, I got some dirt from the bay. That's where I could afford. I couldn't afford the beach back in the day. So I got no bitch for going in the bay and said, Mom, I didn't go to the bay, but, but she saw the water on the bottom of my pants. I never knew how she knew every day until I started pulling my pants up a little bit so I didn't let her know I was at the bay. So that's it. Read those documents and it tells you all the in-depth studies that we did and all of the voting that we did and all of the meetings we did all over Long Beach. Because they wasn't doing them in North Park, they was doing them in Lindell, you remember that. They, they were doing them all over and we, 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 we fought to meet at the center. It's Patty Barnes right there, she got a lot of documentation. Right? Patty, Patty got all that documentation. We got it. We can just add it a little bit. But Patty, she she wasn't she been doing planning for Nassau County for years. She been doing it. Talking about you because you're part of the plan. You know, so I, 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 I hope that we don't just throw all of that out because I thought that he just said we're only doing a few things to add on to the comprehensive plan. So I finish with this. That's that about that. And Crystal will give you all of that. I finish with this.
home with many others there. And so I finished by saying that I called the task force of Nassau County. I called Long Beach aware. I will be walking down the street. Drug dealers will not take over my community. They will not, drug dealers will not take over my community. And I'm saying what I'm saying, and, I, and, 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 and the things about the MLK, listen, some people may think it's a loud move just because maybe somebody black is not complaining about it. I know we got a black city manager and a former MLK director and, 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 and community director. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going, yeah, they, they, they are good American, they may got Cherokee somewhere in there. This time I probably got Cherokee, if you believe. But, but what I'm saying is that injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. And it's not who's presented it. I don't care that Donna is black. I don't care that I love them, no matter what color they are. But they're put on the front street to present what goes in and out the center. And this is the worst that I've seen the center treated ever. In my history, the center was built on my yard. That was my yard. I was a kid that played on the hill. So again, I thank you for allowing me to go this time. But I'm saying, and I want everybody to know, drug dealers will not take over. Gun violence will not take over our community. We will stand together. And if those that don't want to get this, we're going to bring people in that want to give jobs out. We're going to bring people in that want to help and, and rebuild people's lives. But we will not just sit and take this. My nephew died from gun violence. And we're still hearing gunshots and gunshots. And they said that the cameras are not working in Chattanooga. Fix the cameras. How long do the cameras take to fix? They said the cameras were not working at the center. We put the money in to fix the cameras because it's a, it's a pandemic going on. And nobody's crying out. And so now I'm getting ready to leave here. And I'm getting ready to go to my nephew and my nieces. And I'm driving them to school in the morning to talk to their principals about their mother being gone. It's 15 children in about three months that don't have a mother. And I'm saying, I don't know what the narcotics squad is doing, the union, or whatever they're doing. But I'm asking, and everybody, we got to stand up together. We're not going to accept it and to shoot in the community and to throw drugs and find another occupation. Because I'm not going to stand. And I've been quiet, and I've been doing other community work, and, but you know what? You're going to see me more here because it's a teamwork. We got to do this together. And I'm saying you can't arrest your way out. But we have to find solutions and meet together. And we're going to have a meeting. And I'm going to ask the board that we have a meeting. And, and Long Beach Aware and Renee Fisher from the district and the attorney office. We're going to try to have a meeting in the community and the center. It's not just in North Park, but it's all over the country. But I'm not going to stand. So thank you for your time. We're going to work together to bring this pandemic. Another young lady from the community is dead. Another young lady. And so again, our condolences go out to my family and all of those families that's dealing with people that have this sickness. Let's try to get them help. And let's give good solutions. Not just Narcan. That, that's not the answer. That's part of that. That can reverse the effects of certain drugs. But let's come together and get more stronger solutions. The city, the government, the churches, the rabbis, everybody, us together on this very hour. God bless. And uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for coming, and we will see you next time.